Logan Paul doesn't know shit about anything. Logan Paul, f your prime, bro. <laughs> your yeah. prime is so f stupid, man. Dude, you don't even have salt in prime. There's no salt at all. 10% coconut water, though. Combine the nicotine with sucralose, aspartame K, which we know those are also highly addictive. If you trace the money back to Zins, you'll trace it back to Big Tobacco. I wouldn't be surprised one bit. So is, is fluoride toxic? So it's a neurotoxin. So basically, consumption of fluoride makes you stupid. It was good to be back. It was good to be back. Hey, welcome back to the Essential Monitors Podcast. My name's Joe. Lucas. And we're going to go on a few things here today, so let me... Got a list of topics we're going to be discussing. Yeah, let's go off the list. So <clears throat> the first thing we're going to talk about is we're just going to talk about Zins, our thoughts, our experience, um, side effects, some things I was reading online. So we're going to go talk about the Fluoride Action Network, and they're suing the EPA currently. So I want to discuss that. I was reading all about that last night. Next, we're going to talk about barefoot shoes experience. So Lucas has picked up some barefoot shoes, some zeros recently, and he just wants to go on and talk about his experience with those. Then we're going to talk about some blue light glasses. Lucas also picked up some blue light glasses recently. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, so <laughs> we're going to talk about that. And then just a la last quick few things that we're going to talk about. Santa Cruz Medicinal Products. So I ordered a bunch of his products recently, and I wanted to talk about my experience with those, our review, or my review. Although, yeah, you have a Santa Cruz Medicinals products as well, so yeah, you'll be able to touch yeah. up on that. So we can talk about the Zins first. Let's get into the Zins. Yeah, so when did we first try Zins? Must be a couple years ago now. Yeah, it's got to be a couple years. At least like two years. So I, w cause I was chewing actual like tobacco and i wanted to stop it because it's just like carcinogenic yeah not the best thing to be doing yeah one of the worst things you can do definitely yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. terrible for you carcinogenic i mean fire cured tobacco is is quite literally shown to cause cancer so i sh i switched to the alternative of zen because it was kind of marketed as this alternative way to get nicotine whether that's like actual chewing tobacco or they were mostly marketing actually to people who vape mm -hmm. and they're like stop vaping use zins it's healthier alternative and so we started doing the zins the velos the ons ons i've tried them all there's a there's a ton of different brands but yeah there's 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 so many in in uh switching from like a tobacco to something like that drastically improves your health i would say like you're switching from something that's known to cause cancer to something that's relatively better. Yeah, I'd yeah, say. definitely. It was a step in the right direction, but what I wanted to talk about mainly was I know in the last like few months, and I did it a couple weeks ago, we've taken a step towards just not having nicotine at all, like none of that. So I just stopped the Zins entirely like a few weeks back, and I know you stopped it how long ago? Uh, in December. Just haven't done it since. I think one day in December I just stopped like I'm just I'm just not gonna buy anymore. I don't need it, and just stopped. I mean, it's been good. And what was the what, why do you do that? What what made you stop? Uh, I I felt like I was always like relying on it. Like I wouldn't call it. I mean, I guess that's what you would call an addiction. But I didn't want to like have something in my life that I felt like I I needed to have. Like a crutch. Yeah. Like I I like. My goals and motivation in life are to live like a, a healthy, natural lifestyle, like diet, exercise, uh, and just live like very minimalistic, I would say. And to be content just with like life and just being there, not like, oh, I'm only content when I have my Zins. Yeah. It's like, it's like someone that feels lost without their cell phone. Like, oh, I need my cell phone to feel like connected or to feel like I, I need something. I need to scroll on Instagram. I, I need something. I didn't want to feel like I needed something. And I don't know. People make goals start of the new year, new year, New Year's resolutions. So it was like, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't I'm just going to stop. Whatever. Yeah. So I guess, so mine was like two weeks ago. I guess you could say it was like a New Year's resolution. Although I think New Year's resolutions are stupid. So I don't. Yeah. I don't that's believe a whole, That's a whole nother topic. Yeah. But. So two weeks ago, or maybe it was three weeks ago now, I'm not even sure. I haven't 
kept track or anything. I don't know. I just stopped one day and I was I was in the same boat basically. Like I was like, I don't want to have a crutch anymore. Like I always rely on these. I always want them, need them around, whatever. And it was just like too much. I was like, I should just stop having these things and just be more reliant or content just with life. And then, so I had that thought process, but that wasn't really enough to motivate me to stop personally. Like I had that idea, but so I started doing some research on them and I found a subreddit that is anti-Zen. There's a yeah. whole subreddit where all they do is flame Zins and like, every, it's like a place to go where like people are quitting and want to talk and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I'm crazy enough. I did not know there was a sub subreddit for this. I'm sure uh, there's also another subreddit that's pros in. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a subreddit for everything. But I found a lot of interesting stuff on there. Like the first thing that really uh, made me want to quit was people were saying that it like thins out your blood or whatever. And your blood, what is, what is that called? Where your blood can't travel as freely like through the body? Uh, just fluidity, I mean, viscosity. No, they had a specific name for it. I don't know exactly what it was, but they basically were like, your blood isn't, yeah, like viscosity, I guess, would be the best blood thing. Blood flow. But it's it genuinely, like, so nicotine in general, like, stops the blood from flowing as good throughout the body. And that's, like, huge. That's huge. The, the last thing, I mean, that. we talked about that in the grounding podcast, that why do you want to go out and ground? Because it helps your blood flow and stuff like that. And there were scientific studies to back this. Mm -hmm. Well, Zins are doing the opposite effect. Like, you're blocking the flow from going to, like, your brain, through your whole body, and it's not good for you at all. And, good, and really not good for your organs. Uh, your organs need the blood to be consistently flowing throughout the whole body. Yeah. And, I didn't know that. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah, and I think that's nicotine in general. Um, so I was reading about that, and I was like, oh, no. Like, I want my organs to be in top shape. I mean, so that was one thing. And then the second thing that really made me mad was the way they actually set up Zins to literally be as addictive as possible. <clears throat> what really makes me mad is, or what really made me mad when I was reading it, was the way they set up Zins to be addictive as possible. So they try to shape it as this like healthier alternative, which I think it is. But at the same time, like they sneakily are making it so that you, sure, it's a healthy alternative, but we're going to make it so you never will be able to give these up. Mm -hmm. You're going to rely on us the rest of your life. It's going to be like a subscription service that you can never give up. And that subscription service is going to cost you, let's say Zins are $5, even two or three times a week, which is minimum. People get Zins more than that. Yeah, like some people are getting Zins every single day. I know people that yeah. double pack six milligram, whatever, right? And so, I mean, do the math on that a month. Let's say you're buying three a week at 15, 15 bucks, 30 bucks, 60 bucks a month, a $60 subscription. That's extremely hard to give up. And people, I was reading online that nicotine is literally just as addictive as heroin. Is it really? Yeah, which is crazy enough. And I'm not going to, I'm not going out to say that nicotine is bad as all as bad as other hard drugs, right? But the addictiveness is there. Mm -hmm. And that's all the big companies care about. How addictive is it? How can we keep our customers customers? Exactly. How do you how yes, how do you keep them as a customer? And I was reading that and I was like, oh my God. So nicotine is that addictive. Well guess what they do in in that? They combine the nicotine with sucralose, aspartame K which we know those are also highly addictive. It's in all of the processed foods. And that's something I've really been trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm trying to avoid it in all my foods, but then these Zins still have it. And then you double it with the nicotine for a double addictive effect. And they have the whole youth generation and adults like wrap, like stuck to these things. And I just think it's terrible. Yeah, it. There's definitely been like a giant Zen movement uh, the past year. I'd say like 2023 was like the uprising of Zins. Like Zins like really like took off in 2023. Cause it was like, like we were saying, it was a thing like a couple of years ago. Like we've seen them. Uh, they were in the stores and no one really like ever talked about them. No one really like touched upon them. Um, but one thing to touch on though with the health is last year I watched uh 
I think it was Huberman's podcast and he had Peter T on and they actually talked about how like nicotine is a protectant um, for preventing certain like uh, brain diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease. So like on one hand, like nicotine is like beneficial nicotine in itself, not the aspartame K and the sucralose, but nicotine in itself at a lower uh, dosage, like a three milligram or two milligram dosage, not uh, a six or 12 milligrams if you're double packing. So nicotine does have like certain like protective qualities to it, I, I would say, like for certain diseases, but the way you consume it and and the amount of consumption of nicotine, like how people do it multiple times a day, right when you wake up, right before you're going to bed, after breakfast, after lunch, after dinner. It's just, I don't feel like that's really beneficial. Yeah. yeah. In a sense. Yeah, I'd agree too. Like there's some benefits to it and I've read, I've heard the same things. And you know, funny enough, I see it marketed like the knickknacks I've mm -hmm. seen marketed lately. That's like a, a nicotine like mint or something like that. But I just, like I said, like it's literally addictive as heroin and I don't know, like, Sure, if you responsibly use it, but I'd be really hard pressed to find somebody that's responsibly using nicotine. Because how are you supposed to use something responsibly when it's that addictive? That's yeah, borderline impossible. Yeah, I I think like there's a there's a cutoff, and the cutoff uh, for it being healthy versus a really addictive uh, substance or product or whatever you want to call it, the cutoff is very small, and people do not realize that. It's like when I heard about like nicotine being like having certain like health qualities for certain neurodegenerative de diseases, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like everyone wants to do health promoting things to prevent Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. But I don't think people realize like the study is like a low dosage of nicotine and the way you deliver nicotine is, is, a, is a really big thing. You can chew nicotine gum. You could take the Zins, but you can smoke cigarettes and get nicotine. But the way you're like ultimately delivering the nicotine is the problem. Yeah, I agree. And it's not like I said, it's not to me nicotine nicotine's the devil or anything. Like like I said, it can be beneficial. Like those knickknacks, like they use xylitol, mm -hmm. which I really respect that. Like that's a company that's really not attempting to hook everybody, right? Um but I had to just give them up. I was like, I'm, I'm done. I, like you said, when you wake up before bed, after every meal, and then the money and the crutch and all of that, it's just ridiculous. And it just came to a point I was like, screw this, I'm done. I put them down. I tried the coffee grinds, and those are kind of garbage. I was like, eh. I tried some other stuff um, that was like tea, but it had like sucralose in it. And I was like, eh. So what I did, I just went into my into my cupboard and I took a tea bag and I cut it in half. I poured out a little bit of tea, and I literally tried it and and it was just tea, nothing like super addictive in there. There's not yeah. even caffeine. It's actually caffeine free tea. Yeah, like a herbal tea. Yeah, it's yeah. it's from what it's from Whole Foods. Yeah. And and I've tried that and is it doesn't taste the best or anything, but it was something to replace the the habit, right? Because I still had the habit of getting something into my gum. And, like, it's kind of like people who chew gum all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, you're really used to gum. Like, you kind of need something to still crutch on a little. And that's what I've been doing. And the last few days and stuff, last few weeks, I've kind of been doing it. I haven't really even been doing it as much. I, I'll put in, get a tea bag out every so often when I really am feeling like, ooh, I kind of want one. And I'll go do that. But I've felt great not doing it. And I honestly recommend everybody else to just put those things down and yeah. screw, screw that company. The Zins. The way like I, I like to live my life is I like to be I try to be different from the majority. And you could probably agree with this. Like r right as like the uprising of Zins happened was the down right like the downgrade or I don't know what you want to call it, the down uh, slope of me wanting to be associated with anything about that because when like when I was doing it like in the summer of like 2022 or something like a couple years ago now no one else was doing it and I was like okay like whatever I'm doing my own thing like I'm being unique 
I don't even know if I want to be called unique like that, like associated with something like that. But right like this past year when it got so popular, it's like, eh, time to change. Yeah, I feel you. And I, yeah, I was on like the same wave. And I was just like, it's just shady business tactics. And you want to yeah. know it was really shady? And I remember when they did this. Remember when Zins were a dollar a piece? They used to be really cheap. I doubt, and it was for a reason. They were like, we're gonna bond, we're gonna onboard people to our product by having it a dollar a piece, and we're gonna make it so addicting with aspartame, K, sucralose. We're gonna create a trifecta of addicting chemicals. Yeah. And then we're gonna get people come buy five packs for five dollars, and then all of a sudden we're gonna ramp the price up to five dollars. They knew that the whole entire time that they were gonna ramp oh, the price up to five it's bucks. It's a multi multi billion dollar industry. And I feel like big tobacco is literally behind it. At the end of the day, like they say, it's a healthy alternative. I haven't looked into the ownership, and I would, I, if you're watching this, go look into who owns these companies. I would not be surprised if you trace the money back to Zins, you'll trace it back to Big Tobacco. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised one bit. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either. I I will say another thing with the price is those Ons, another like nicotine pouch, uh, similar to Zins, uh, they were three for three. Like you, like just like you were saying, like a dollar a piece. You could go to the store and get a pack of of Ons. Uh, that costs a dollar, three for three. And it was the most cost-effective way to deliver nicotine and to feel like you were you were doing something healthier or a better alternative. And then once, like you said, like everyone starts doing it, they raise the price up and, and uh, people will still pay for it. Yeah, because they realized that basically everybody caught on to their product, everybody was addicted, and then they just raise the price, and you're right. They'll still come back. It's not gonna. They're not gonna stop because it went from a dollar to five dollars. They're not. They still are gonna pay. Yep. And I, I was guilty of that myself. And I highly recommend anybody that's chewing those zins or anything, just put it down. Put it down. You could take the method I did. You could just go cold turkey like you did, whatever. But, um, yeah. Even if you do like coffee, if you were to get a pouch, maybe you empty the tea bag and you put in some coffee. If you don't like tea, whatever. Something better than that that's not going to be so addictive and that you're not just going to crutch on all the time. And Yeah. Yeah. I sure. mean, I, I felt good, so that's my recommendation. But we can go to the next thing Let's here. move on. Yeah. So I was reading yesterday. I just read onto this last night, and I'm going to actually have to look on the computer here more. Um, so fluoride. Yeah, fluoride. So the Fluoride Action Network, it's called. And they are suing the EPA in the biggest trial related to fluoride that has ever been taken place. So they did a lot of studies. They did, I believe it was a 10-year study. Oh, it's the Lotus study. That's what it is. Okay, so the Fluoride Action Network, they're suing the EPA based off of some studies that they've ran the last um, X amount of years. And one of the big ones is the Lotus study. That is the longest study that's ever been done on fluoride, and it's a 10-year study. So let me look up Lotus study uh fluoride this is insane to read about so let's just start off with what fluoride even is because a lot of people might not even know so fluoride is in all the water right we put in all the water toothpaste yeah i i don't know like i think it's just in water because it's like a, a byproduct i don't think they purposely put it in there maybe yes, they, they do oh they do okay yes. but i think everyone might know fluoride from their dentist or just associated with toothpaste or their mouth or cavities, something like that. That's like where I ever first heard fluoride from a young age was, you want fluoride, you want to prevent cavities. And the dentist would say, uh, brush your teeth with a fluoride toothpaste, uh, use a fluoride mouthwash or, or whatever, and you'll be good. And these studies originate, I'm pretty sure when they originally started introducing fluoride into public water systems and toothpaste and stuff, I think it was like the 50s or 60s, they mm. ran some who knows such studies, probably backed by big fluoride, <laughs> <laughs> and big fluoride. Uh, they concluded that, like you said, it was it prevents cavities, it's good for your teeth, all this stuff. I mean, I went and told the dentist last cleaning that I don't use fluoride in my toothpaste, and she was throwing a fit, saying you're gonna get cavities. Oh my god, like you've got to get fluoride, and um, you know I've learned from the past. Uh, sometimes you know just trust your own research and don't listen to the medical professionals you know wink wink 
but we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> um, yeah. But so this Lotus study, they did recently, uh, they did a 10 year study, longest study ever done. And results were over 10 years, people receiving optimally fluorinated water experienced only a 3% reduction in um, invasive dental treatments such as fillings and extractions and only a 2% reduction in tooth decay, missing and filled teeth compared to those who received non-fluorinated water. So basically what that says is if you're using fluoride products, you're only going to maybe get a 2 to 3% reduction in any sort of cavity, right? Is that basically what it's saying? Yeah. So your chances of reducing a cavity, tooth uh, extraction, whatever, 2%. Yeah. Yeah, and so they always thought it was like way wow. better than that. That's what wow. they would claim because why would you even do that for two percent? Yeah, right? yeah, that's that ridiculous. No sense. Because you have to realize there's a cost associated with fluoride. This isn't free, right? So they have the cost on here, and it basically they claim that you know found no compelling evidence that fluorina- uh, fluoridation reduced um, quality of dental health, and. Oh, so these studies ran between 2010 and 2020. Optimal water fluoridation cost about ten dollars or ten pounds and thirty cents per person. That's a, it. Pound is around similar to a dollar. I actually think it's a little bit. I think dollars would be a little bit more. But regardless, it's ten ten thirty per person. And when they did all the math and how much money that was costing, it was ridiculous. It's this huge cost that the governments are spending. To, to get 2 and 3% type numbers. And it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, this is when I'm talk- I was telling you the other day about the incompetency of the government. That's, that's part of it. <laughs> yeah. That's... And so they're investing millions of dollars into this fluoride. And, uh, yeah, like, let me read more. The total return on investment would have been $16.9 million. This means that the costs were recovered... So they they claim that over a 10-year period, basically, that they were able to save almost $20 million by by taking out the fluoride. Because what they argued before was, we're going to spend money on fluoride, but it's going to reduce costs of people that they're going to have to spend at the dentist, right? I guess, yeah. Because dental treatment's expensive. Yeah. So that was the thought process. Well, when you're talking about 2 and 3%, and now you actually have the real benefits compared to the cost... They're like, wait, no, we're actually spending twenty million, and we're not reducing. We're hardly, re- we're only reducing by a million. What up, two to three percent of that? So let me ask you this about this: Do you think that they knew the percentages, or they knew how low of a reduction the fluoride was actually like giving you in like a cavity or a tooth problem? Do you think they knew like, yeah, fluoride's actually not that effective, but we're still going to tell you it's effective anyway. So that's where what I meant by like big fluoride. It's like who funded these studies back in the day? Who was the first one to recommend fluoride? And this is more research I would like to dig into. I just started reading it last night. Do you think maybe like, I'm just like thinking out loud here that fluoride, like whenever it was, whenever it started to become implemented into the water and toothpaste, well, like the 50s or sometime like many years ago, uh, they thought it was effective. But um, as more research came out, uh, they realized, oh, it's not that effective, but they just didn't want to change some outdated uh, research on on the product fluoride. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I mean, don't know. I you, You'd have to do dig more research. Who funded the study? Who's profiting based off the study, stuff like that. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to ascribe attentions to people, right? I'm not sure their intention at the end of the day, but it's sketchy. Well, is so this makes me think of a toothpaste container. Isn't it like on the toothpaste container that like you should not swallow the toothpaste because it's toxic? So is is fluoride toxic? Yeah. So let's dig into that. So yeah, fluoride is a known neurotoxin. If you take heavy amounts of fluoride, you will definitely have brain issues. It will it is a neurotoxin. Yeah. Now, what the professionals claim and what all these studies would claim that fluoride in low amounts isn't a neurotoxin anymore. It's actually beneficial. 
And, I mean, common sense kind of tells you that, you know, that's weird. I, I'd i rather just stay away from neurotoxins in general, and I'll just, you know, take care of my teeth, right? Not eat junk food, not drink pop, you know, brush my teeth, all the above, right? Yeah. Mainly drink water. Like, anytime you drink a coffee, swish, swish around water, like, brush your teeth, stuff with non-fluorinated toothpaste, like a baking soda-based toothpaste. But... They always claimed that, you know, it was it was reducing and stuff, but So um, it's a neurotoxin. So basically consumption of fluoride makes you stupid. Yeah. Doesn't it it lowers your IQ. So that's what part of the Lotus study is. So what they're claiming is they're they're going more into it than just just the cost benefit analysis doesn't fit correctly. So part of the lawsuit is also that it's quite literally lowering people's IQ on a population scale level, which is <laughs> absolutely crazy. And I even read a tweet yesterday that um, I think on the Fluoride Action Network Twitter, you can go you can go on their Twitter at Fluoride Action Network, and they were saying that w- pregnant women who consume fluoride from water and toothpaste, it's being p- passed via the placenta to the baby. And now the baby from birth, not, actually, it's not even birth yet, and it's already having the IQ effects during oh its development. God. Now the baby's stupid. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's why everybody's stupid now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why I'm stupid? Yeah, probably. Um, wow, yeah, that's and it, very interesting. Let me look more into this. Uh, accessing our data. So there, there are simple ways around this though. Buy a fluoride-free toothpaste. Find it in any really any store, Whole Foods, and filter your water, basically. Um. Well, the first thing I would recommend would be, ideally, don't live in a place that has public city water like that. I would stay out of that place. You want to live in places where you have your own well. That'd be the first thing. I do not trust any public water system where, like, I go pee and poop, and then it sends it down into a system, and they, like, clean it. And then it's, they send it back to me to drink. I saw a video recently about like like water treatment facilities. The water that you flush down your toilet and the water that comes out of your tap that you drink is the same water. Yeah, it's yeah. If you live in a place that has actual public like sewer systems and a public it's all water the same system, water. It's all the same water. Like nobody in the country is like taking their septic tank and like reusing the water to pump back into their house. Like, no, you have a septic tank where your pee and poop goes, and that goes out into like a field in your backyard, and it and it goes into the ground. It's like a fertilizer because pee and poop is used as a fertilizer, mm-hmm. which is yeah, great. But you have a well which gets fresh water from a different yeah. area, not by the septic field. Yeah. Usually, like let's say the well would be in the front, the back of the house would be the septic field. And you get your, you just get it from separate sources. You're releasing back there, getting new water out there, and so that you're not going through these public systems where you you just yeah. can't trust it. I, I think I had the false reality for a long time that the water coming out of my tap was some magic clean, never used water. <laughs> well, no. So my thought process on it, my whole life was always like basically like. No way tap water is going to harm me. Like, how is tap water going to harm me? How could I be worried about, like, the water that's coming out of my faucet? I can't live life like that. That was always my mindset. But when you read into it more, and there's, like, websites to, like, go figure out, what, like, what kind of chemicals are in your water, what's been tested. Yeah. And it's it's not good. No. It, it's definitely harmful. And this this lawsuit is really one of the best examples that I've been able to see recently and i thought it was interesting so they have another thing on here 78 studies and they have a link to all 78 studies have reported that elevated fluoride exposure is associated with reduced iq in humans uh the 78 studies are based on iq slash cognitive exams of 30,000 children and 700 adults yeah, from 1989 to 2023, there has been 87 total studies that have investigated the relationship between fluoride and human intelligence. They say that nine of those show that there's not an association, but the other 78 showed that there was an association. So I wonder who uh, ran those nine studies. Was, was it incompetent people? Was it big fluoride? I'm not sure. 
but large majority here is saying don't drink the fluoride and talking about like intentions like clearly why would the 78 studies what what intention could they have besides just trying to help people because when you cut fluoride out they're not like saying like come get this come get that they're not profiting in any way they're just like we want to help people on a large scale yeah it's they're not saying cut out fluoride and come take fluoride 2.0 Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not like they're coming in with this alternative, like, oh, come do this, kind of like what we said with the Zins. So Cut out vaping, come take our Zins. Yeah, come take our Zins. Like, no, this is just like cut out the fluoride and just cut out the fluoride. It's as simple as that. And they list here, too, over 600 studies that found that fluoride does damage the brain. Um, And, oh, so they have the other study here that links mother to offspring fluoride studies provide compelling evidence that Fluoride exposure during prenatal and postnatal stages of life have the potential to cause neurodevelopmental harm. Jeez. The level of fluoride exposure in three of these studies is the same level exposure found in fluorinated communities. Wow, that is absolutely crazy. That's and insane. From the 78 studies, 68 studies were from drinking water, nine studies were from coal burning. Uh, that doesn't make sense. And one study was from fluorinated salt, which I didn't even know they did that, but apparently there's fluorinated salt too. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to keep up on this more, but this is a live lawsuit that we're talking about right now, and I think it's going down in Florida. And if this goes through and the EPA gets sued for this and it like it, they're charged guilty, like it's four four nations going to be out of water. And the next time I go to my dentist, they're <laughs> going to be like, no, you shouldn't use fluoride. It's bad for your brain. Yeah. And honestly, I actually have a cleaning here in like two or three weeks. And I, I'm, I'm telling my person mm-hmm. about this and I'm going to say, hey, just so you know, like there is a lawsuit going on. I would not recommend fluoride to people right now. Cause that's what, and that's the crazy thing about these medical professional. It's a medical professional because they professionally recommend these things, and you assume as a consumer, an un- unknowledgeable consumer, that like, oh, they're a professional, they know what's best, so I should take their recommendations. But yeah. just for reference, guys, going forward in life, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't live your life like that. Do your own research. Listen to what they have to say. Weigh all your options and make. A conclusion don't just listen to a professional yeah definitely i i think one of the best skills you could have is to learn how to read a pubmed study yeah like go on pubmed.com and learn how to read a study look who's reviewed the study look at who the study who wrote the study look at everything about the study about a certain topic and just uh make your own assumptions do your own research because at the end of the day that's basically what a, a dentist or a doctor does is they go off research. I mean, there's research done. And in this case, there was research done on fluoride and they said it reduces cavities. So we're going to recommend that people take fluoride in their toothpaste and their water uh, because that's what's best for people. And stuff has changed and there's new studies. And I think that uh, science is ever changing and and, uh, people should... uh, obviously do their own research but um question everything yeah i think it's super important to be able to be able to go like free thing for yourself read pubmed studies and stuff learn how to read like the introduction conclusion the abstract and understand that maybe look at like actually how they did the study Mm -hmm. because a lot of these studies you can read it and you're like what 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 did that there was there was six patients or like six people studied and you come up with this crazy conclusion and stuff like that and then it's also Really important to look at who funded the study Oh yeah. because all research has to be funded by somebody and that person who is funding it has certain bias. They're looking to prove a certain thing. When they fund a study, they don't truly want to know whether it's true or false. They're trying to fund it to actively make sure it says true. Yeah. And that's really a big part of the thing. Um, what, they, well. what they do is they they look at the p-values in a study and the p-value is what is statistically significant uh, when running research and what happens in studies is sometimes people are paid off or uh, people are swayed one way to p-hack or or I think it's called p-hacking or or something I can't remember what it was called but we learned about it in one of my research classes at Michigan 
And uh, what they would do is they would shift the data or exclude certain points from a study that would make the p-value statistically significant. And when looking at research and looking at anything, if the p-value is less than 0.05, which means it's statistically significant, you're like, oh, yeah, I believe that. That's true. But when you take out certain uh, values or, or points from a, a research study, you can sway the, the, the needle anywhere you want. You, mm-hmm. you can make it however you want it to, to be. So I don't know. You just got to question everything and, and, uh, and really just see uh, what's best for yourself. Yeah, you just got to be able to critically think at the end of the day. It's just critical thinking skills and being knowledgeable about these things. Like a lot of people aren't aware of p-values, anything yeah. like that. They don't even know what that means. And yeah, I would just do some more research on this and come to your own conclusions. Because if people would have just listened to these um, regulatory agencies by the government, these incompetent regulatory agencies, they would just assume that the fluoride's safe, it's all good, listen to the professionals, these are these people would never want to harm you, these people would never be incompetent, like, these are, you know, they're out for your best interests, but no, these people went and did their private own studies, and they were able to find, you know, great results here, and I, I, I hope that that lawsuit goes well, and that big fluoride doesn't, you know, not get their way, because there's somebody that's profiting, somebody makes that fluoride. Somebody has to sell that to the government, and those people are fighting so hard to make sure that this lawsuit is squashed. The la- I mean, I was telling you, $20 million, right? I was talking about $20 million. People will go fight very hard over $20 million. They'll do go to very, you know, move the needle any way they want, manipulate data the way they want, all that. And the people who are trying to get fluoride out of the water... It's not. They're not going to make twenty million dollars or anything. They're just trying to fight for people's health. They're trying to fight for yeah. these babies who are in the womb, who are already having neurodevelopmental damage. And if this is concluded, that's just absolutely wicked. I mean, sixty years of neurotoxin being fed to strong. Well, I wouldn't say it's strong majority of people. And the reason I say that is because the website does say that, like at least in England, um. Only about 10% of people in England actually receive water that uh, has the recommended fluoride level, which is about one milligram per liter. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people do live out in the country, and they have their own well and stuff. And like I said, if you have your own well, you don't have fluoride in your water. And luckily, like my house here, we have a well, so we don't have fluoride in the water. And there's other things to concern about when you have a well, and that's something to dig into. And that's why we like reverse osmosis water, stuff like that, but... I'll say if you live in a public area where you have a public water system come into your house and you use a public sewer, uh, just, just watch out. That's all. Yeah, for sure. All right, we can go to the next. Let's thing. move on. Yeah, so let's talk about your barefoot shoes. Yeah, I actually, so yeah, I got these barefoot shoes last week. It's been a week now since I've got them. Uh, the Zero Barefoot Shoes. And Wait, can we, you spell that out for us? Zero? X-E-R-O, Zero Shoes. Yep. Zero Barefoot. Uh, it's a barefoot shoe brand uh, that my roommate Preston recommended. But I've had them for a week now, and we have a whole uh, podcast on barefoot uh, living, barefoot uh, training, just everything barefoot, episode three of our podcast, all yeah. barefoot. But uh, I got these shoes last week because I've wanted them for a really long time. I needed a new pair of shoes. I wanted some a nice pair of shoes for the gym, something to wear to the gym, and I go on walks every day, 10,000 steps. So I wanted something that uh, would be good for my foot. So I got these shoes last week, and uh, I will say the first day I put them on, uh, my feet were really sore uh, from from wearing them. I went on, I go on like two mile walks, go to the gym, and just from wearing them, my feet were sore because my foot is not used to being like my foot's not used to being flat on the ground like you are in the barefoot shoes and my toes are not used to having room to spread in the toe box versus a normal shoe where your toes are kind of crushed in to the toe box. So it was noticeably uh, different for my feet the first couple of days. And then I got kind of used to wearing them and it's been really good. Were you sore? Uh, I, I I wouldn't say I was sore like when I would get back from a walk, but I would say like when I would start to go on a walk, I'd be like, wow, like it's a little like sore, like the inside of my foot or, um, 
you know, the heel or something, but it wasn't like it was like a soreness that like persisted for the whole walk. It was just like noticeably like different, like the start of it. And then I adapted and it was all good. But I have such a positive experience with these shoes and I could not recommend them more to anybody. And the same with Preston. My roommate Preston, he got these zero uh, barefoot shoes. And when I texted him, I was getting them. He was like, he's like, oh my God, I love those shoes. I need another pair. Um, Cause he's worn them so much that uh, they're just worn out and, and ripped a little bit. But I could not recommend barefoot shoes enough to anybody. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up some some of those because I was using the uh, I don't even know what they're called that Swiss shoe that's pretty big everywhere. I don't know. I don't know the brand name. It's like a little. This is like Swiss engineering all over. It's it's a Swiss based company actually, which I like the shoes and all. They're good, but I want to. I I need a new pair, and I'm gonna get the zeros and try those out because I, I don't wear shoes all the time. I really try to like to stay barefoot. But like you said, like you got to go out on walks, and we live in Michigan, so it's it's yeah. cold. You can't go out barefoot all the time. Like, well, you can go ground for a few minutes outside, but like you can't go get ten thousand steps outside in the in the snow like that. And I, when I go to work, like I gotta I gotta wear shoes all day. I can't go to work barefoot. So I think zeros are gonna be a really good option for me to be able to spread my toes and stuff and not be trapped like that. Because sure. when, when I'm at work. I do like to, we have a gym, so I like to go into the gym and I will take my shoes off and I'll walk around barefoot, like squat. I do all this stuff. I'll do, actually sometimes do really simple stuff. Like I'll just do like um, step ups or I'll, I'll I'll just do little simple stuff that can really utilize my feet. But I'm going to get those zeros and I think that's going to be a really good step in the right direction um, regarding, you know, barefoot living and stuff. Totally. The ones I got, they were eighty nine ninety nine, and then... Uh, the total came out to a hundred dollars even. So there, there are more expensive barefoot shoes, but I would say those are relatively, uh, cost effective for what you get and the quality that they are. I would say it's a great starting point or, or a, a great barefoot shoe to, to get, to try them out. I have nothing but good things to say about them. Yeah, it I sounds, love them. Yeah, it sounds like a great solution. Hundred dollars—that's standard nowadays, or what do you say, ninety for shoes? And and if you're if you are barefoot a lot and not utilizing your shoes all the time, even though they are barefoot shoes, they'll last for a long time too. So if you yeah. consistently, you know, try to stay away from putting on shoes, but when you do need to use shoes because you can't always just be barefoot, you can throw on the zeros and. Now you you don't not ever stuck in this place where your where your foot's all trapped and start to develop bunions or whatever. That's literally how bunion like I'll just say it again. That's how bunions are created. When you're in a shoe that's very narrow on your foot, your toes are all like curved into each other, and then the bunion the the bone that's right next to your big toe kind of sticks out, and over time, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then eventually gives you severe pain because your foot's used to being in a position where your toes are smashed together and the the bone your bunion is just sticking out like it's such an unnatural way for the foot to be and a barefoot shoe is an immediate if you have to wear shoes all the time whether it's like you you go to work or, or whatever you go to the grocery store walking outside barefoot shoes are such a good solution to to get your foot to uh, sit in a natural position for an ex- extended period of time. Yeah, especially it's a really good solution for those people that are working jobs. Like I work a desk job, right? So I don't, I need to wear shoes, but I'm not like actually walking around a bunch. Like I, I do have a standing desk, which is really nice. But you have like those medical professionals, nurses, people who work in like labor jobs. And to be able to have that when you're just walking around on like a 12 hour shift mm-hmm. is really, really cool. Yeah, because you're in the hospital. You're not taking your shoes off. If you're a hospital worker, these would be so nice. Because 12 hours, 12 hour shifts a long time. So if you have to wear shoes for 12 hours, like that's a long time. It's half a day. And I'm sure a lot of these hospital workers are getting like 10,000 steps during that time, right? For sure. Yeah. For sure. So to have those 10,000 steps to be in the barefoot shoes, um, quote unquote, would be really good. My mom really liked them. She uh, She's going to get a pair. Awesome, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll have to order a pair soon. My my shoes, yeah, my shoes have holes in them and stuff. They're they're bad. They're bad. Yeah, but I'll check them out. Um, so we can move, move on, on to the next thing. You also picked up some blue light glasses. Yeah, I got these blue light glasses. Uh, 
they block 100 percent blue light it's a orange lens and orange is the opposite of blue so when you look at something blue uh it's just you can't you can't see the color blue um but i picked these up because um when the sun goes down you want to have a natural circadian circadian rhythm and when you when the sun goes down and you're inside your house all the artificial light the led lights your phone you're staring at uh the tv you're watching tv you're playing video games uh you go to the bathroom uh when the sun goes down and the artificial lights in your bathroom are turned on it's just all not the best and especially before bed it's been shown to uh impact your sleep the quality of sleep you have at night so i picked these up uh these again were actually the same price they were 90 bucks <laughs> so uh, i got these a couple weeks ago now i've been wearing them um every single day before or i've been wearing them every single day actually in the evening so around six o'clock seven o'clock i'll put them on is when the sun goes down and it's been really good. Uh, one way to start out with avoiding blue light is what we've done for months is you can turn the color filter. There's a there's a filter on your phone where you can turn the, the blue light off um, and your phone will essentially just be red. Like the colors, is, it's just red or orange. You well, don't see any blue light. Well, I want to say, so there's two different things you can do on the phone. Um, you can turn, if you go to your settings on your light thing you can like hold you know the brightness thing on the iphone that you can go up and down you can hold that and that turn that will show you like blue light and it will say it and it, and you can do that and it really it reduces the it's, blue it light tints a little. it a little it bit. tints it a little but if you carnivore md put out a hack one day and he was like if you set a shortcut you can set a shortcut if you triple click the side of your phone to actually turn off all of the blue light and you'll visibly notice like the phone is actually like red now and I thought that was so cool. I've been doing that for like a year now. And yeah, every single time when the sun goes down, set that on and it's great. And honestly, the steps I've taken even recently is like, screw that even. I just turn off my phone. Like, I'll, like sun will go down. I'll turn on the red light or turn off the blue light. And then around like eight o'clock, I just like turn my phone off. Yeah. And it's just off for the whole night until the morning. No, that's that's definitely a great solution to not use the phone, but... If you do need to use your phone before you're going to sleep, uh, definitely uh, figure out how to do the shortcut where you turn off the blue light. Um, it's going to be so good for your sleep. It's just not natural to have the blue light in your eyes in the evening hours. Yeah, uh, we have all no this. Sun. Yeah, we have all this artificial light, and yeah, the sun's down. Like back in the day, you could think through all of history. All we did was the we would only see light when the sun was there, right? Like, besides, like, a, a fire, right? So yeah. you, you'd you get the sun rise, you get the sun set, and that was the blue light that you had exposed to. You could you could light a fire at night, but that's red light. That's, that's not blue light. There's no blue light exposure there. And so humans developed, you know, we were designed to have, like, a circadian rhythm, and he, the, the sun rising, and Huberman talks about this a ton. He has a whole podcast about, like, sun exposure and stuff and blue light exposure. But the sun rising indicates that, like, I need to fall asleep around, what, 12 hours from now or whatever that is, 14 hours from now, and your body starts that clock. And then same thing when it's setting, your body can utilize the blue light to know that, oh, I need to go to bed soon. And But what happens in the modern day and ever since, you know, light has been artificial light has been so prevalent in society is people just run the lights all night until yeah i mean they don't even shut them off sometimes people genuinely have night lights and stuff around their house and it's 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 really messing up the circadian rhythm because it's not like over this period of when were lights first created up uh 150 years ago right 100 years ago not that long ago. Not that long ago. Like the Netflix show I was watching, um, oh no, it's an HBO show, Gilded Age. That was early 1900s and light first was, light bulbs were first being invented. Like it was a big deal one day when they had, they all the rich people went to go look at this building and um, Thomas Edison, yeah, Edison was showcasing his lights and 
he was showcasing that he not just has one light or two lights, he can light up a whole building. And it was honestly cool, actually. Yeah. They flipped the switch, and the whole building lit up in New York. And these people were mesmerized. Like, it was the coolest thing. And, oh, my God. Yeah, which is great. That that was probably groundbreaking to see. And it's really helped uh, move society in a more productive direction because now we can be more productive into the night. Mm-hmm. But it's not like our circadian rhythm caught up to that or developed to that. It's it. They didn't realize at the time that that actually is going to affect the circadian rhythm, not in a positive way. And people are going to get worse sleep. And sleep is so critical to your health, I mean, in general. So, yeah, I'd highly recommend the blue light glasses and the hack with the phone, turning the phone off. Honestly, just not turning on blue light. Like, keep the TVs off, whatever. Like, read a book when, yeah, read when a book. nighttime comes. But sometimes you do have to still, you want to watch TV, you want to play a video game, whatever, you want to go on your phone, whatever the case may be. Maybe you have to work, maybe you're in a hospital, right? That could be a big one, and you work a night shift. And yeah, these would be great. Yeah, those wear. would literally be great. And I, I know you said those are 90 bucks, and that is more expensive for blue light glasses. Like, I'm sure people will go research right now and see, wait, there's blue light glasses for like 10 bucks on Amazon. But why did you buy those ones? Well, so actually, I used to have a different pair of blue light glasses that I paid $100 for, and it was a clear lens. And I bought them during COVID in 2020 because I was like, oh, I'm on my computer more. Like, I don't want to, like, you know, wear out my eyes. And I, I want to have good eye health is what I was thinking. And it was a clear lens. But I didn't realize, I didn't do enough research at the time that um, the orange tint is the opposite of blue. So you want to have an orange lens because it is effectively reducing most, if not all of the blue light you're exposing yourself to. So the the glasses I used to have were a clear lens and I thought I was doing good and, and maybe I was doing some good. Maybe it was filtering like 10% of blue light, but it's still not enough to be effective. Um, but I found these glasses, uh, I actually found them from Joey Sorts on Instagram and the whole website, I think it's blockbluelight.com or something. They have a whole website where it details like the the amount of blue the lens uh, filters out and all the science and, and research behind the glasses. So uh, it seemed like a really good brand and it was backed by a lot of research and, and um uh, people actually using them so i just pulled the trigger and bought them so most so majority of blue light glasses that you see um whether whatever the price point is they don't actually block out the blue light like those cheap amazon ones they block out maybe 10 percent, or i think i i think it sits more around like 40 percent is what they'll block out but the ones you have genuinely block out a hundred percent of the blue light at least from the lens part right yeah Yeah, you can go online and look at different blue light glasses. You'll see clear, like regular glasses like yours, uh, like a clear lens. You'll see a a slightly orange tinted lens, like not as much as these. If you look at these, these are more red. Um, So you'll see like three different kinds, I would say. And the clear ones virtually don't block anything. I don't even think I'd waste my time buying those because you might as well just not if you're buying those, you might as just well as well just not use your phone or not watch TV. Like, there's really no pr- like purpose in buying those. Well, I would say I would say there's one purpose. So the one purpose, and I think this is what a lot of people get them for, is eye strain. Like you were talking about, like eye strain. So I think blocking out like forty or fifty percent. Let's say you're sitting on a computer all day, and people look at their phones all day. That could that could be useful for eye strain. So, because you're, it's really straining to actually have the blue light exposure constantly yeah. really high. So people like to, re- you know, turn down the volume a little, basically. But in terms of like the circadian rhythm stuff, like forty to fifty percent, that's like you need to block out a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You're right. I would say if you're a person that has to look at your computer all day, you work a desk job, or your job just revolves computer work, uh, maybe buying the clear clear lens ones is not a bad idea. Um, personally, I would still go with these because you can still put these on and see, uh, perfectly fine inside and on your computer. You just can't see blue. And you, if you wanted to see real, like something normally with your eyes, you just take them off a little bit like that. And wow, that is really bright. 
these lights. It is so much different, but um, yeah, I I really like these. And and when you're looking at blue light glasses on Amazon or any sort of website, just see if there's any research or, or facts behind the glasses. See if they're uh, see if they're reputable. The brand's reputable. Like this is the the case it comes in. Uh, yeah. Black blue yeah, light. Yeah, get that closer. Yeah, black blue light. You can see that. And inside the case, or the glasses came inside the case. Inside the case comes with this little lens cleaner. I mean, you can buy better ones or better lens wipes, but um, came in this box. Every day, I'll put them on at six, seven o'clock in the evening, and I'll uh, wear them up until I go to bed around ten or ten or eleven o'clock whenever I go to bed. And when I go to bed, I'll uh, put them back in the box. But even like during the evening, I'll I'll put my phone in. I'll, I have the shortcut. I'll triple click the power button to put it in the the orange mode, the red mode, and um, I just try to block as much blue light as possible. And I have nothing but good things to say about these glasses. If you, if it's something you can afford, uh, eighty ninety bucks um, for some glasses like this, I think it's. Uh, a critical part of health because sleep is very important. You want to have good quality sleep. Yeah, I would say when it comes to health, like actually sleep is one of the first things to look at, honestly. People get the worst sleep nowadays. Like, you know how many people actually have sleep apnea? It's crazy. You know how many people use those machines and stuff? Oh, yeah. I know Gabe from Full Send. He he had sleep apnea and so he's big, right? He was fat. And so he had sleep at like that's very common when people are fat they can't sleep and that's why they snore so loud. Yeah. And he had to use a sleep apnea machine in order to like get proper sleep and they do help you get sleep, but you shouldn't have to rely on something like that. And I know lately he actually lost a ton of weight. Like he's looking good. so good. He looks like a whole new person. And I bet you, but he doesn't have sleep apnea anymore. Which yeah. is really awesome for him. Like he's just gonna get better sleep, which in turn is gonna like help him lose weight, like make him healthier and feel better overall. So yeah, sleep is critical. I, I would not sleep on sleep at all. <laughs> but yeah, we can move on to the next thing if you want. Um, yeah. Let's talk about some of these products that I had because we're already talking about products we bought. Yeah. So I'll talk about some other health products I got. So these are from Santa Cruz Medicinals. I know. The last few months, like we've been watching Santa Cruz Medicinals a lot. Like he's awesome. Like he's he's creating he's so much exposure and awareness to health stuff. And whether it's to like older people or like he's he's really exposing to a lot of the youth. Cause you'll see like he goes into like a mire and he'll buy all these kids like soccer balls and stuff, or he'll give people like a hundred bucks to stop drinking pop. And I don't know, he's really awesome. So I've really watched his content now for a while and he's he makes some products and he sells them. And they're really cool. So I know we got a couple. So you bought me this um, on my birthday. Was the here? I'll put it closer in the camera. This the let me see. I'll put it in the camera here. So the Santa Cruz. Oh, let me get up closer. This beef tallow here, Santa Cruz Medicinals. So this is grass fed, grass finished beef tallow, which is basically just like beef fat, right? It's rendered beef fat. Yep. And. It's really rich in fat soluble, like bioavailable vitamins, A, D, E, K, and B vitamins, high smoke point for cooking purposes. And I know I mainly use it as like a lotion, basically, although you can also cook with it because it has a high smoke point. But I've been just putting it all over my face and all over my hands recently. And oh my God, it does wonders, especially up here in Michigan. You get this dry winter environment. You get forced air around houses where it's just so dry inside the houses. Like most houses need a humidifier. And if you use this, like it really helps. Like I used to get like dry, like chipped skin on my face and stuff. I have none of that this winter. I felt so good. Like my hands, dude, they usually just crack. But look at them. Like they're not cracked and everything. I used to just have bloody knuckles. Yeah. And this has solved, like, I mean, I've done a lot of health changes with my food, so that's helping because that really is a big part of the skin. But in terms of, like, a lotion, like, this is insane. And this has been a game changer. Yeah, I uh, I think I bought – so I, I think I followed Santa Cruz Medicinals for about a year maybe. I don't know. Almost about a year, I would say. And I knew he made great products, and 
I followed him for a bunch of time, and then I finally was like, you know, I want to, I want to try it out. You know, see what it, what it does. I don't know. It's only fifteen bucks on Amazon. Yeah, it's really, really cheap. Um, beef tallow you can get. It's really high quality. And I will say though, I heard about people putting beef tallow on their face, or they use it as like a lotion, and this beef tallow is slightly different in the sense that it's filtered. So the beef tallow that you buy at the store, Epic is a, a brand of beef tallow that you can buy. It smells like beef tallow. And that's not a bad thing. Like it still like has its purpose in cooking or whatever you'll use it for. But yeah, because mainly people are using beef tallow for cooking. Right. And if you're trying to put it on your face, I will say you want to find a, a filtered beef tallow. Like you can even open it up and show the camera like what it looks like. This beef tallow is filtered, so it looks a little different. Um, it's it's uh, it's more clear, white, uh, whitish. I don't know. It's uh, and it solidifies like that, so it's a nice um, uh, butter to put on your face. But but yeah, no. So I uh, I originally bought it back in June. We're in February of 2024. I bought it back in June of 2023. And I was like, this stuff's amazing. I I remember Brendan, he, would, he said he was putting it on his face, like after the shower, you shower and then you put this on your face. And oh my gosh, it's been so good. And I felt so cool using it. I was like, look at my, my skincare routine. And the skincare routine also gets put in my pan for my steaks. And I would use it cooking too. And it's lasted me a long time. It's lasted me months. I, I do need to pick up a new one. But the beef tallow has been my favorite. It's the only Santa Cruz Medicinals product that I have personally bought. But uh, you've bought some other products like the creatine, protein, electrolytes, all of them. Yeah. So that's lasted months. I, it sounds like it's lasted you almost a year. Well, I I when mean, did you get it? I bought it back in June or July. So and, so, so so over six, seven, eight, eight months. Over six months. Yeah, and I, like. Personally, the way I use it, like you don't need a lot, like uh, to put on your face. You take a tiny bit in your in your finger, you rub it in your hands, put it on your face. That's all you need. And like, obviously, there's some days I miss where I don't put it on my face. I, I travel a bunch uh, to Ann Arbor, and I sometimes I don't have it with me, or I just forget. And it, it's not the end of the world if I don't put the beef towel on my face. But uh, when I'm consciously thinking about it. I'll throw it on my face and it's lasted me. We're in February. It's lasted me since June or July. And I'm, I'm about to pick up another container. The only reason I haven't picked up another container is because I think it's out of stock. So It does go out of stock a lot, I will say. It does go out of stock. When I know when I first, when I went to purchase it actually, it was out of stock. And funny enough, I, you shipped it to my house somehow like a day before or something. I don't yeah. know. And I went to go look in my front, and I was like, how do you get this? It's out of stock. You were like, I, I must have ordered it right before it went out of stock. And, I, yeah, I put it on. Like, I'll get out of the shower, and a lot of time, like, showers dries you out so bad when you get out. Like, the water, I don't know, just dries you out terribly, especially, like, the, the water that comes out of, like, public systems and stuff with all these garbage chemicals. It really dries you out. Or, like, chlorine if you're swimming in pools or, like, hot yeah. tubs really dries you out so for to put and all you have to do is literally put a little 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 pinch and i really like to rub it all over my neck because my neck would used to get dry and now oh my god it feels so good yeah. and yeah my fiance has been doing it too and she was worried at first because she's like am i gonna get pimples am i gonna get pimples and everybody's worried i can't put fa that stuff on my face i'm gonna get pimples that's what hasn't happened to me. That's what everybody asks, and Santa Cruz Medicinals has talked about that before. And I believe beef tallow is non comatogenic, meaning it doesn't clog your pores, meaning it will not give you acne or pimples. But also, if you're eating a relatively healthy diet, uh, you shouldn't be getting bad acne uh, to begin with. But some people might get acne, uh, but beef tallow, you shouldn't worry about um, it causing any acne or or being bad for your face. People have been putting beef fat on their bodies, their faces for years. It's not like some new thing. The new thing is putting all these dermatology recommended skincare products on your skin that are, are filled with a laundry list of ingredients. That, that you have no idea what they even mean. You have no idea what they are. 
and you're like, oh, well, I need this for my dry skin, so I need to put it on my, I need it. I, I really need this. My dermatologist recommended it to me. I need to put this on my skin. No, you don't. Yeah, and what I like about it is, yeah, single single ingredient um, that you can understand and grass-fed, grass-finished, uh, made in the USA, and it, it's long-lasting. Like, you buy this thing, like you said, eight months, basically, or whatever. Like, I swear, if you if you weren't cooking with this at all, because that's really where it gets you, you'll use more is if you're yeah. cooking. If you're strictly using it as a, as a uh, like, skincare product, it's literally going to last you a year. Um, and what I also like is that it's in glass too, because all these lotions you get from the store, it's a million chemicals, but it's also the packaging it's in. It's some garbage plastic container or something. And I don't want to rub like plastic all over my face and stuff. So you get this and it's in glass and I don't know. Everything's right about it. It's a really quality product. And so I'll showcase some of his other products here that he has actually that I really like. All of his products are quality. And he's always making them better too. Like he's working on it. I know yeah. he, you said even about the top. Like you noticed my top of it was different than your top. And he's just, you know, taking steps to make them better. So it's just cool. So I got the creatine here. This is the Santa Cruz creatine powder. And, you know, provides a lot of neuroprotective, cognitive benefits. And it's just, you know, makes you stronger. A lot of people use it for weightlifting. But nowadays, it's there's a lot of research that's showing it's beneficial for the brain. Um, I know people used to be scared of creatine back in the day. No need to be scared of creatine. You get creatine from meat. It, it's it's This is just a supplementing some extra. Um, which is pretty awesome. And the good thing about this is th he gets it from, it, so it's made in the USA, and this is probably, this is sourced from one of the only sources of creatine that's not from China. So most creatine comes out of China from all these garbage brands you'll see when you go into like a vitamin shop. And sorry, I, I'm good on trusting creatine coming out of China. I know what goes through these like Chinese facilities. Like it's not clean. Like there's there's fentanyl going around a lot of these Chinese facilities, and they there'll be like remnants of it left on stuff. And I just don't trust it. I'd rather have stuff that's made here. And um, I know a lot of people also source creatine out of Germany. Um, so that's pretty awesome here. I really like this. And yeah, you get one of these, and I to I do like a half a scoop. I don't take a full scoop because I'm only like 145 pounds. I'm not a big guy. So I, I, I do about three grams of creatine a day. There's 400 grams in here. And some days I actually don't even take it. Like some days I'll miss it, but mainly I'll take it. And yeah, this lasts me months. So that's pretty cool. Um, I have, I honestly went all out on his products. I ended up ordering everything. So I'm a Santa Cruz fan. So beef isolate protein here, chocolate. This is also superior rich in collagen peptides so what i like about this again like the ingredients they don't go crazy go to go to a typical protein powder the ingredients you don't know what they are you can't understand it's like a science experiment it super seems low like. yeah and it's filled with artificial sweeteners again which they use artificial sweeteners because it's addicting and then you become addicted to their product and that's all they want and it's just, I like to buy from companies that are looking out for my best interest, not theirs. Like, it should be a mutually exclusive business deal when you buy things. Like, Santa Cruz wins because I paid for his product. He, he, he got money. He made money off of that. But at the same time, I'm winning because I have a quality product here that I can trust and I know what's in it. And also, I know who makes this. Like, I know who the business owner is. I watch him online all the time. I know he has good intentions. He's not just... Like shady, some big company, big conglomerate of corporate where it's like a group of people making decisions and stuff. I don't like any of it. I stay away from it. I go, I like to, you know, I like to shop locally. I like to shop from people I know and stuff like that. So the ingredients in here, beef isolate protein, cacao powder, sea salt. He does have natural flavors in here, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but that's okay. And he uses stevia leaf extract as the sweetener instead of like sucralose or there's no sugar in it or whatever they use and all the other stuff. So, yeah, I mean, how many ingredients is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I forgot. Oh, yeah. Sea salt. One, two, three, four, five. It's five ingredients in this protein powder. And I love that. I mean, it doesn't have any like the anti caking agents or whatever they do because a lot of these companies. They add these silly little chemicals in there to, like, 
make it not stick together as much or this or that. And it's like, I don't care about that, dude. I just want the simple stuff. I, I don't yeah. need all the anti-caking agents and like even simple stuff like uh, spices. People don't realize it's literally filled with tons of chemicals in there so that like the spices don't all stick together and it comes out easy and all this stuff. No, I want salt. I want cayenne pepper. I want like cayenne. That's all I want in there. Simple, cayenne. simple ingredients yeah. that you know and you've heard of before that you can pronounce. Yes. That, are, that aren't too difficult to figure out what they are. Yeah, if you can't pronounce the ingredient, I'd probably stay away like from it. Like, that's the problem. Like, there's some, like, protein brands you can get where the flavor is, like, cookies and cream. It's like, what is that? Cookies and cream flavored protein? Like, are we being for real right now? Yeah, that's What ridiculous. is cookies and cream? It's artificial. It's artificially flavored, uh, filled with sucralose and laundry lists of other ingredients you just yeah, do not it, want. What even is cookies and cream? <laughs> cookies and cream. Like, what is that? Like, cookies and cream. What do you do? Take an Oreo, dip it in the milk, and call it a flavor? Like, that's ridiculous. But what is an Oreo? Oreo is not a real food product. I don't know. Uh, yeah, no. It's, yeah. it's for betas. Yeah, you can, watch our, you can watch all your videos that you make where you go around the grocery store and absolutely cook everything, but... yeah. Yeah, yeah the, uh, funny. Wait, what was the Oreos? It was Space Jam Oreos. Oh yeah, recently I saw some Oreos at the store, some Space Space Dunk Oreos, and LeBron probably does uh, uh, eat these Space Dunk Oreos because LeBron's a beta. Yes, uh, yeah, I'm not a LeBron fan, that's for sure. Yeah. No, me neither. Okay, I'll show this last uh, product I got here. So this is the other product I got. I'll get a little closer to the screen lemonade electrolytes so this is the product that santa cruz is always pumping out he's constantly talking about this one and so this is electrolytes and what do we got in here ingredients wise sea salt citric acid um pink himalayan pink salt natural flavors magnesium potassium stevia leaf extract so a lot of these electrolytes you just have like garbage stuff in there. Like you have Prime and they claim that there's like tons of electrolytes in there and stuff. No, they put sucralose in there again to make it addicting and stuff and make it sweet. Drinking Prime is a crime. Yeah, yeah. Drinking Prime is a crime. But you have, and they don't ever put salt in a lot of the electrolytes because people, again, why would consumers don't like, like a salty like drink, right? It isn't really like consumer friendly, so to speak in terms of like wide scale selling something but again santa cruz is just looking out for people's best interests like sure maybe a little salty or whatever and that's something we noticed when we first had it but it, it's like that on purpose because electrolytes it has to be salt electrolytes comes from salt that's um, what you want electrolytes are, are na salt and uh potassium k okay. i mean these are yeah magnesium this is just like basic chemistry here fellas like yeah. This is what you want. Like electrolytes are should be salt based. Yeah. And that's and what it, you're losing through your sweat. And it's a it's essential trace minerals and stuff. And you know, funny enough, I was at work and I was putting and I had a lady start telling me she saw a video online. This is gonna be funny to even say. She saw a video online and somebody said to put baking soda in in your water. Oh. I was I I'm I don't know why. I mean I don't think for what I don't know. Why would you do that? She said it's like hydrating. Or, I don't know. That sounds like a crazy science experiment, but I don't know why. Is she vegan? Stuff. I don't know. I didn't get into she the details, but you know, funny enough, I was putting this in my water at the time because we have a, like a sparkling water on tap. So I was going to fill up my bottle with that and I like to put this in there. And so I started telling her about it, and I was like, "Yeah, put a, put put these in. Put take some salt. Even if you just don't take these, just take salt and put it in your water." And she started asking me like, "Why would I put salt in there and stuff?" And I was telling her like trace minerals, electrolytes. Like it's really gonna help hydrate you, mm -hmm. and because salt soaks water up, so you get the salt throughout your whole body, and now it can soak the water. Versus if you have none of that in your water, it goes in and it goes right back out. And your body didn't even soak it up. That's why, like, people who drink water will drink a glass of water before bed. They got to pee so bad throughout the night because it didn't get soaked up. It just went through. So if you take some salt or you take some of this and you put it in the water and then drink that before bed, it's really going to soak it up in your body better. And you're not going to have to pee throughout the night, which, again sleep so important the last thing you want to do in the middle of the night is have to go pee and it wakes you up and it really throws off your sleep yeah disrupts so, your sleep. and a lot of people have trouble even falling back asleep right so 
yeah, just a little life hack there. I would highly recommend this. Again, it's about, uh, I think, 25. No, I think it's 30 bucks, and there's 30 servings. So he likes to market it. That's like a dollar per serving. And dollar per serving is cheaper than a Gatorade, a Prime, any of that. Right? Because yeah. wh- where do you find something worth a dollar a drink now? Like, that's like, sounds like 2005, right? Like, yeah. or 2010. Like, it's 2020 now. You're talking two, 250 a drink, right? Yeah, so, and you don't want to be drinking uh, Logan Paul's Prime or it's garbage and big Gatorade. You don't want to be drinking Gatorade. It's full of sugar, Logan Paul's Prime, Sucralose. Like, this stuff is not good for you, but they, they want to market it like they, they care for you. And this is an electrolyte based drink that athletes drink. And you have LeBron James doing a Gatorade ad, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's healthy. It's like, no, it's not healthy. Yeah, th- that's what I hate about it. Like, you have these people do ads for Gatorade. You don't drink Gatorade. You don't drink Gatorade. Same thing with Prime. Like, Arsenal is, like, the Prime sponsor or whatever, and I love watching soccer. I love Arsenal. I'm a big fan. But they don't drink Prime. The- none of those people are going to drink Prime. You think those health experts running those people are like, yeah, drink Prime? No, they know to go drink stuff like this. They're just taking salt, putting it in their water. They are not giving them prime or whatever and that's what i hate about when logan paul sitting there marketing that prime is so much better than all this stuff like he has some videos online where he basically goes over um gatorade prime uh what's the other one powerade nerd. no what's uh the one people use when they're hungover Oh, uh, liquid IV. Yeah, liquid IV. And he's comparing them at all. And he's like, Prime's better than all of them. Like, dude, you don't even have salt in Prime. There's no salt at all. 10% coconut water, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he likes to tout the coconut water. <laughs> I love coconut water. There is electrolytes in coconut water. But why wouldn't you just go buy coconut water then? Like, like that would, it's such a simple like thing, but they make it, he markets it so it's cool and you get kids who think it's cool and they create a cool factor to it instead of just, you know, this being actually useful for you. Uh, I don't know. It's no. it's ridiculous. Logan, I, I would love to see what Logan Paul's thoughts about, are about this. Logan Paul doesn't know about anything. Logan Paul, f- your prime, bro. <laughs> your yeah. prime is so f- Stupid man. I, <laughs> yeah, Logan Paul in general is is a joke. I I definitely support George. I'm a George fan. I've been watching. George, yeah. You know, funny enough, ever since George left Impulsive, I don't even watch Impulsive. I watch George's podcast because that's the only reason I tuned into Impulsive before was because George and half because of Mike. Because I can I can respect Mike. I like Mike, but he's a little too like pro Logan. But <laughs> Logan, no. Like if he's the reason people think if he thinks he's the reason people watch Impulsive. He's dead wrong, dude. No, nah, like, yeah. Like, people don't, like, maybe kids look up to you. I see a lot of kids, but even kids are turning their back on that. Like, even um, my fiance's little brother, he used to be big Prime fan, and even he started to dwindle off of Prime because, like, you have a lot of news articles going around that, like, kids are drinking that caffeinated Prime that has, like, 200 milligrams, which is worth about four cups of coffee. And kids were drinking that, like developing health issues. Yeah. And they were, I think, throwing Red 40 in Prime. And a lot of people were becoming aware. And I know Santa Cruz has made a ton of people aware of that and exposed that. But a lot of people hate the Red 40 now. And, yeah, it's becoming less cool, which I, I, I love. I mean, and hopefully people were making that, you know, aware too and exposed. So Yeah. Um, yeah, we can move on. That was in terms of like products we had. Um, you want to just, you want to cut it or you want to keep going? Cause we're already at an hour 20. Oh okay. yeah. We'll leave it at that then. Okay. Then that'll be the podcast. Yeah. Uh, hope you guys had a good time watching and we had some insightful stuff that we could offer you guys and yeah, check us out next time for, what is this? Episode four. Episode so four. yeah, come back for episode five, go check out our old episodes. We got, episode on cold plunging barefoot living a little intro episode and yeah we're just gonna expand more here and thanks for watching like comment subscribe